and welcome back to Watches Live at Watchbox Studios. This is the only show we host on this channel, so if you're watching, you're in the right place. I'm your host, Tim Masso, and we are looking at an unprecedented show. Mono brand, boutique brand, independent brand, all from our good friends at Debatun. We know them as Debatun. I've been mangling their name for a couple of years, but they insist on Debatun. And of course, since they've supplied me with about half a million dollars worth of their watches, this is the first time it's gone from the factory straight to Tim, so you guys are getting in on the ground floor. This is going to be the all Grail Watch episode of Watches Live. Jumping into the box, we've got our friends joining in from far flung. If you're getting up early, if you're staying up late, thank you so much. Let me give you something for free. Link in the description. I am giving away a Rolex Milgauss GV 116400 boxes, papers, but you got to be in it to win it. Click on the link. And if you want to join me, me with literally all of the watches on the table tonight at Watch Time LA, May 3rd to 4th. Click, link in the description, enter. You gotta be in it to begin it, as I like to say. And every single one of these watches will be at the show. Jumping straight in, I can see Richard Howard is first in the box. Hail Bob, Tom P from Chicago, McKinley Stevens. We've actually got VDBDG joining from Japan, and Dominiki Jr., JBO Sir from Adelaide, Karsten Lund from Denmark. We have Aaron E. from Brisbane, Australia, getting up early with us, and Richard Howard in my own zone down in Orlando. We have John Watch from Harrogate, and we've got the Watch Lounge from Mer Welcome Dominiki from Amherst Mast and Abdulaziz joining me from Toronto. Thank you so much guys. Let's start Richard Combs from Florida. Actually a good friend Richard Combs. Welcome. Glad to see you again. And we got Pilot Style 123 from Ireland. Let's start with a watch that blows my freaking mind. Launched in 2013. This is the DB28 Skybridge. Let's start with the basics. 45 millimeters in grade five titanium with a concave mirror polished, that is black polished, fire blued titanium dial. The closer you get, the more impressive it becomes. The dial is entirely concave, and if you look at what appear to be the stars in the cosmos, you'll realize that they are hand placed, hand finished, white gold cabochon. That is correct, white gold individual applique stars, and the sky bridge, of course, this black polished grade five titanium fire blued central member terminating at its base with a bimetallic 360 60 degree spherical moon phase. I don't know if we can get any closer to the style, but that is one half blued steel and one half precious metal palladium. You could see a 360 degree moon phase and that dial, look at the depth of it. It's unbelievable. And of course the timepiece featuring the signature floating lugs. This is a watch that conforms to you rather than forcing you to conform to it. Turn it over, it gets even crazier. The case back featuring a black polished Full bridge for double mainspring barrels, endowing the watch with a six-day power reserve. The balance, let's get close to the balance. You can see it's all blued in its own right. The plinth underneath the movement is blued, and the balance features triple parachute shock protection with a solid silicone disc. It's actually a silicon disc with a white gold rim. This is about as tech as it gets. Every single one of these parts made in-house by Debatun, and of course the watch itself part of a series that hails from a brand making only 150 watches per year these days. I'm actually going to take the watch off my wrist. I'm wearing the freaking prototype of the 2019 DB28 Grand Sport Grand Bleu. This is the GS Grand Bleu. This is a timepiece that blew my mind and I suspect it's going to blow yours. 44 millimeters in grade 5 titanium. The watch features a dial side 6 day power reserve. You can see that the balance features the triple parachute triple shock protection system but this is the part and I hope this cap captures on camera. It has a dynamo powered lighting system. Let me fire this up and just make sure. Boom. All right. At night, and you can see the mainspring barrels discharge to power the dynamo that drives the LEDs. The six day power reserve, and you can actually watch the power reserve indicator running backward. It's got enough juice to run for about 45 seconds in nightlight mode. And there's also super luminova on the minutes and hours. I'm actually petitioning them to add a fully lumed seconds hand and note center seconds on a DB watch, not common. 105 meters water resistant. This is also their first rotating bezel sports watch. And if you listen to the detent, I'm gonna give this one some mic time. It's as good as anything hailing from the majors in the dive segment.
it is incredibly crisp. I'm going to show it to you on the wrist. The lugs expand from 51 millimeters to 54.5 across the wrist. This is their new standard sized floating lug arrangement. And again, it does conform to your wrist. I could easily see myself wearing this piece. This is one of the most impressive new watches I've encountered. Six day manual wind power reserve, triple parachute shock protection system, dynamo powered active lighting, and of course, rotating bezel, 105 meters water resistant, 45 millimeters in grade five titanium. This is the good stuff and only 12.9 millimeters thick you can cuff it I should mention almost all of these watches are on shipping straps. This one is the double donut. This is the prototype zero zero. So they were very kind to get this stuff to me in real time. And I could see bump, 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 bump. We've got some friends joining from Korea. Edward Ledden of Sweden says, love it. And I note right here, we have Matt Foster saying, that's a lot of DBs on the table. Look, I'm from Miami. I've seen parking lots full of Lamborghinis. That stuff doesn't impress me anymore. This is like a parking lot full of Bugattis. This is next level. This even intimidates me a little bit. And I can see right in the box, Richard T saying much better than a meal. That's a fact. They actually make all their own parts. Hair springs, they do that. Balance wheels, they do that. Their own silicon escapement, they do that. And they do their own shock protection. They also make watches that are just objectively beautiful. You don't need to know that they only built five examples of this kind of blue tourbillon to enjoy the fact that it is breathtaking. 42.7 millimeters, all in grade five titanium, inside and out. That's right, the bridges of the movement, the upper bridge made of titanium, the case made of titanium, and all of this recodable by the company itself. If you scratch it, they can recode it. Now take a look at the balance. You can see this is a separate white gold silicon design that's designed to allow you to see the tourbillon carriage. And it's a 30 second tourbillon, not a 60 second, a 30 second, meaning you get double the fun, twice as fast, all of this still manual wind. And you can see the power reserve on the case back now with a five day power reserve because 36,000 vibration per hour, 10 beat per second tourbillon, El Primero style, but with a 30 second circuit. This is about as animated as a tourbillon timepiece can get without multiple axes. It's a bullhead winder, so it's fun in that way. And you can see on the wrist, it wears slim. It's only 11.4 millimeters thick. So though it's a wild watch, you can easily cuff this one. The other thing is there are two different lug sizes with this model. There is the 53 to 58 that you see here. And then there's a smaller size that's about 49 to 50. So you can actually have that swapped out and changed when you send the, the watch into Switzerland for service at De Batum, the timepiece. Absolutely mind-blowingly monotone. I will admit it is very blue, but then again, that's why it's called the kind of blue. And with only five made, only five folks will have that particular optical challenge. <laughs> the timepiece, absolutely Star Trek. You're absolutely right, Ziggy. They do have a sort of Federation shield pattern to that barrel bridge. And as you can see, this is the 2019 DB28 Yellow Tones. This is like the nitrided fork of a sport bike. If you can think of that golden nitride color that you see on titanium nitride forks designed to reduce stiction on super bikes, that's exactly what you're looking at here. Now this watch debuted in 2019 at Watches and Wonders Miami, it is all grade five titanium. In spite of the golden tones, and you can see they are inside and out, this is a titanium watch. It's 42.7, and this is on the new 51 to 55 millimeter Goldilocks that is just right lug size. It's the one that's shipping on all the watches. I'm gonna do my best to take some of the fingerprints off this timepiece, but this is all new. Again, it's not gold, it's grade five titanium. And you can see that internally on the dial side, let's get super close to this one, you could see that the chapter ring itself is actually yellow titanium. There is a serrated hour chapter ring that features spherical globes of polished titanium, and you could see how the bimetallic 360 degree moon phase down at six o'clock is now oxidized seal in gold and palladium. You've got the triple parachute system and you've got the 2016 model of their balance, which is skeletonized blue titanium with white gold masses outboard. You can even see the off-center dog leg kink of their proprietary concentric beading centered mass hairspring. These guys are doing it all in house. I should mention a lot of these straps are simply shipping straps designed to get over the fact that it's rather difficult to ship alligator. So this one's calfskin, but the final model will ship on gator. This this is how it looks on my wrist, 16 centimeters. This is all gold without the precious metal premium. And again, they can recode it if you scratch it. 
Jumping into the chat box, I can see Hale Bob saying, this one might be my favorite. Brick Lane saying, who laid out the watches for you, Tim? They look very neat. Well, it's a combination of me and my crew. I always put the finishing touches on this stuff. I'm a little bit OCD, but you guys probably knew that already. Jumping into the box, I can see Mark S. Said, saying, at Edward Ledden, haha, awesome, I'm a Top Gun fan too, and a Tom Cruise apologist. Hey, Top Gun was objectively cool. When I was in OCS, we were at a church a thing one morning where we could get donuts. It was the only time during the week that the, the DIs couldn't like put us on our face and yell at us. And there was like, a little TV in the corner of like the donut room at the church and Top Gun came on and like 50 people who were in OCS like suddenly went silent watching this stupid movie. So it's more powerful than you might imagine. And I can see we've got Ian P joining from Indiana, long live and prosper. Welcome guys, Marcus Copley joining us from Spain, saying he's a huge fan of De Batun. They are his favorite independent artisans. Let's talk salmon dials, guys. They're hot now, but DB has been doing them. And this is the 2011, but still cataloged, DB25. Now this is the DB25, standard lugs, a little bit more compact across the wrist. It's a 44 millimeter white gold case with a rose lathe guilloche salmon dial and a perpetual calendar. You still get the spherical moon phase. You get the perpetual calendar system that first debuted on the 2004 DB15. And you can see it's a perpetual calendar with a pointer style date. You've got the day, you've got the month, you've got the leap year cycle indicator, turn it all over and you've got an automatic movement. Now, there's a lot going on here. The base caliber is the DB2024. Five-day power reserve because it's got a power-hungry complication. This one features a shock protection system made up of springs and anti-stiction jewels at the center. So what appears to be an embellishment at the center is actually a shock protection system with jeweled contacts to allow you to absolutely slam this automatic perpetual calendar movement. It features the triple parachute shock protection system. So this one is all in for durability. I'll show it to you on the wrist. DB's been doing this watch since 2011. The basic perpetual calendar movement's been around since 2005, but this is a wonderful, I would say middle ground between the extravagant pieces and a more conventional dress style high horology timepiece. If you want to shift gears with De Baton, you will get this model because it's a bit more muted. This could be your everyday watch and this owns the Patek Philippe 5270P. As much as I love that watch, I love this one more. Or in Spider-Man speak, I larb that one. Jumping into something that's even a bit more discreet and compact. Some people are a bit more conservative than the DB House style. And for them, there's 2018's novelty, the DB25 Starry Various. 42 millimeters in grade five titanium. This one features a remarkable dial that is effectively fired titanium. They got a patent on this right off the bat in 2002, the first year they established their manufacture. Look how discreet the ghosted nameplate of the brand is. De Batum right at the top of the dial and you could miss it off axis. The Milky Way is a combination of laser ablation, so it's created that tone of gold right through the titanium center, but there are also hand-placed, hand polished polished white gold cabochon. And you can see the depth of this dial. There's a toroidal ring that runs around the outside with rose gold applique indices. It's silvered and it features stylized blue Roman numerals. You can see almost Breguet style rose gold hands at center. This one only 42 millimeters and wonderfully easy to wear on the wrist. This is your discreet watch. You want sub 10 millimeters thick. You want 42 millimeters or less. You want a watch in titanium that wears as though it's not even there. Turn it all over. You're still getting the good stuff because on the case back you can see the basic 2110 movement six day power reserve you get the same triple parachute you get the same proprietary balance you get the same proprietary hairspring silicon escapement the double barrels the six day reserve if this isn't an everyday watch for you you only need to wind it once every six days let's take a quick look at the crown because that bears a little bit of attention look at the knurling the drilling and the styling, as well as the exterior polishing of the crown itself. That's just the crown. That's the attention to detail you get from these folks. And you can do that when you're making 150 watches a year. Jumping into the box, we have, bump, 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 bump. Steve M saying, hi, Tim, joining late. That's all right. I'm totally into everyone who makes the show. I appreciate it. JBO Surf saying, now that's better. He's a fan of the Starry Varius and it's more compact case and it's more discreet dial. I can see Edward 
and Ziggy both agreeing these are sci-fi watches. Cody C is he saying he likes that one a lot. Rich Buddy saying what a dial, quite an imagination to produce that. That is only the beginning. Let me show you a dial that rethinks entirely the way a chronograph should operate. I'm talking the 2014 GPHG chronograph prize winning Maxi Chrono. This is the DB28 Maxi Chrono Black Gold. 45 millimeters in red gold. This movement has over 420 parts and 51 jewels. Now, the way the chronograph works, let's get real close. It's a mono pusher. They thought of everything. You know with my Zinnese M1, I often say it's easier to read chronograph minutes from the center. Well, how about we read chronograph seconds, chronograph minutes, and 24 hours straight from the center. Everything that looks like a Breguet style hand but skeletonized, that's giving you the time of day. Now that stub hand is your 24 hour chronograph hand. This one goes to 24, not 12. You could see there's a radial minutes indicator currently sitting at 52 and you could see that there is a sweep seconds that runs radially. Everything is read off radial scales. There are no sub registers on the Maxi Chrono. Now turn the watch over. I need to talk about this caliber because it's a game changer. Three column wheels and three clutches. I'm going to try to take the fingerprints off this watch. This uses the award-winning absolute clutch system. Let's talk about what that means. A conventional lateral clutch features, well, a little bit of jump or stagger when you start it off. A vertical clutch is ugly. It doesn't give you much to see and it creates a thick timepiece because of the way it's stacked. The absolute clutch system is complex, yes, but it gives you the best of both worlds. The absolute clutch uses a roller system with no teeth to engage the seconds hand without any stagger when you start it. It uses an oscillating pinion, much like the mono pusher caliber, the THA, featuring Debatun's own Denny Flageolet designed for Cartier. The oscillating pinion, that's for the minutes, and then you have a horizontal clutch, a conventional lateral clutch for the hours of the day. Of course, this is a fearsome complication. And you can see the timepiece beautifully finished with all black polished and skeletonized upper bridges, allowing you to see the works. Of course, a mono pusher chronograph. You start it, you restop, you reset, all of that, just like so. 45 millimeters in red gold with blackened titanium floating lugs. This is a GPHG Laureate, the Chronograph Prize winner from 2014, about as good as it gets. Now, the Maxi Chrono dial actually originated in 2006 when Denny Flageolet and his partner at the time, David Zanetta, Italian co-founder of the brand, asked why is it so hard to read a chronograph? What can we do to make it more readable? And the result was the Maxi Chrono concept. New for this year, the DB21 Maxi Chrono Re-Edition. Now this one is titanium. It's 44.5 millimeters, and you can see this is a sporting style. So you have a sports style watch, but you have that same Maxi Chrono concept. The timepiece, of course, a mono pusher with that wonderful odd arrangement of all metrics. Of course, the top of the watch is actually the opposite of the crown. So this is the top of the watch, 24, 1, and 0, and 60. All inside a highly sports styled watch with the exact same movement. So if you don't want to wear a hunk of gold on your wrist, I've got good news. You can get the same package without paying the precious metal premium. You can get this caliber. You can get the absolute clutch, the triple column wheel and the triple clutch, all of it in a titanium case. This is the 2006 model re-edition. DB21 for 2019. So it's an oldie but a goodie, and you can see on the wrist it's easy to wear. This one features more muted blued titanium tones as it's a satin finish about the lugs. It's not the same gloss blue that you get on the kind of blue. They're all wearable watches regardless of size. We're jumping into the box right here. I can see, bump, 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 we can see Tobias saying, that one's not for me. Matt Foster saying, I like it, but for the dollars, prefer a more traditional watch. Well, I have a bit of a more traditional watch, a five piece limited edition. This one is actually for 2019 and it's made to order for a Geneva based private jet charter company. This is the DB27 Titan Hawk private jet, five pieces, 
This one is more traditional. It blends the, the traits of the DB25's conservatism with the floating lugs and the bullhead winding of the DB28. And you can see it's all blue. The timepiece is relatively muted with satin finish to the case. And if you look, you can see that there is a lateral striation that runs the circumference of the case. The case band a little bit more nuanced than what you see on the DB28. Now turn it over and psych. This one features a jet style turbine, but what you would see underneath is a manufacturer automatic with a 60 hour power reserve. This one on the wrist, 43 millimeters with a more muted satin finish is a bit more conventional. It's certainly slimmer. This is a halfway sort of best of both worlds watch that gives you the distinctive floating lugs, the DB28, with some of the discretion of the DB25. That watch also in titanium, 43 millimeters. The standard model is a silver dial, but these guys are highly amenable to suggestion. If you want it, you could have one custom made with the jet dial. Jumping into the box, Brick Lane saying all about DB tonight. And then right here, Mark S saying, is it true Tim is like working with Keith Oberman? No, I'm much worse than that. Much, much worse. Uh, I, I've actually got the melt stick from Thor 3. True story. So if you like the Grandmaster, we have a watch that is, well, frankly, worthy of a Grandmaster because this is probably the ultimate tourbillon timepiece. Originally, the Torbion Deadbeat Second was launched in 2011. The model you see here was launched in 2013. This is the DB28 Torbion Deadbeat Second. Now, it is a Deadbeat Second double escapement. You have the 36,000 vibration per hour, 30 second period Torbion. So it makes 30 second circuits and it beats 10 times per second down at six o'clock. There's a power reserve window right under that that lets you know when the five day power reserve is up. And if we can get super close to the center of this dial, Harrison, we're gonna show them the second escapement that regulates the one hertz true beat second system. You can see that ticking away at the center of the dial. The watch has two heartbeats. When you listen to it against the ear, it has one that beats a single time per second. It has another that beats 10 times per second. 30 second tourbillon, 10 beats per second, and a one hertz separate escapement for the deadbeat second system. This timepiece I have to mention is also a prototype. So. 45 millimeters in grade 5 titanium. I'm lucky to get this many on the table. You will never see this again. This is going to be a red letter day in my career in the watch industry that I remember forever. So right here, this is the DB28T Tourbillon Dead Second. 45 millimeters in grade 5 tie, deadbeat second tourbillon, and a 30 second period. About as good as it gets. Jumping into the box, I can see Adrian C is saying that is a very impressive piece. Anak Park saying laugh out loud, Star Trek can't be unseen. I actually like that because I often say that if Richard Mille makes a race car for the wrist, the racing machine for the wrist gets beaten out by the starship for the wrist. And I should mention too that I will be showcasing all of these watches at Watch Time LA, May 3rd and 4th. I'm going to be moderating an independent brand panel. Debatun is going to be there. H YT, Romain Gautier, Kerry Voudelainen, FP Journe, all represented. I'm going to be moderating the panel. You guys get to participate and ask the questions. Be there, but you got to be in it to begin it. Join me at the Hudson Loft in Old LA. Link in the description, guys. Please register. I want to see you there. Food, friends, fun, and of course, good times and good timers. Let's jump to a watch that I've often considered a personal grail, and I'm kind of up in the air about whether the new Grand Blue sports watch or this is actually my dream debatun. The timepiece on my wrist launched in 2014, the DB28 Digital. 45 millimeters in grade five. This one is a jump hour. So if we can get super close to the dial, there are four things about the style that jump out. First, the true rose lathe guilloche cut main dial. That is not stamped, folks. That is engraved with a rose lathe. You can also see at center, the blued titanium cosmos surrounding that bimetallic palladium and blued steel 122 year moon face. That means it need be corrected only once every 122 years. Just below that, at least on the screen, is the jump hour display. And just below that is the 180 degree sweep of the scrolling minutes display with another grade five blued titanium sweep featuring applique white gold stars. Now the watch does feature the floating lug system that conforms to your wrist. You can see it's not as thick as you imagine. Open up the case back, you can see this is the six day power reserve 
manufacturer caliber. This one with the solid silicon balance wheel with the white gold rim, triple parachute shock protection. Note that they blued the full balance bridge and each side, shock protection, shock protection, and then it's center Inca block for the balance staff. So it's either gonna be this for me or this. I've pretty much decided one of these will be my next watch. I, I, I cannot resist the pull. It's not so much a Star Trek Starfleet watch brand as it is a Borg Collective watch brand because once you see these, you will be assimilated. My God. By the way, for you guys who weren't here to watch the open, this watch has its own dynamo-powered lighting system powered by the mainspring barrels, which you can see scrolling in the background. Otherwise, it's a 105-meter water-resistant rotating bezel sports watch with a six-day power reserve, a power reserve scale, and I don't know what to say other than this might be the most important watch the brand has ever launched because I see this true swimmable, all weather, all conditions, all circumstance sports watch as the Richard meal killer of the brand. Yes, I see right here, Rich Buddy is asking, what the, lights? Yes, lights. Four LEDs, there will be a video of that on Watchbox Reviews, so you guys stay tuned. And then right here I can see Monsignor Neo saying, hey, blue shirt, red shirt tonight. And uh, I think blue shirt Buddha, one of our regulars in the box, I kid. Uh, we've got Daniel Fernandez saying, it should be moving. What should be moving? I think everyone, everything on this table is in action. And uh, right here we've got I clog saying Susan Wong is showing off the DB28 on Instagram. Tim's female counterpart. I would love to meet her. She is very cool. Revolution and Susan Wong and Waco, all very cool people. We need to meet. And jumping right into the box, I can also see bump, 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 bump. Howdy from Texas saying, I didn't realize that DB makes so many different complications. They have 27 manufacture movements. This is a company that's maybe built 3,000 watches in 17 years. They have 27 movements over 100. 50 individual models in that time. Jump into a watch that we haven't discussed, but we definitely need to. Let's say you're a world wanderer and you want something to keep tabs. Well, launched back in 2011, the DB25 World Traveler. This is a world time watch as only Debatun can do it. It features a radial date indicator, that's that little indication outboard, salmon accents, and a dial with incredible depth. Now at center you have your primary reference cities. This ring is designed to be customized. That's why it doesn't have 24 reference cities. There is a 24 hour reference ring, and then this little globe moves all around that reference in 24 hour sweeps. Here's the thing, one side of that globe globe is actually fired and darkened to represent the night. The other side is bright polished. One side is oxidized steel, one side is white palladium, just like the moon phase. Just like the moon phase. That little globe is designed to rotate through 360 degrees, and in this case, it gives you AM, PM, night or day status for, the, for whatever part of the dial it aligns with. It is a wonderful refinement. The romance of this brand is endless. This model is in white gold. Although it looks chunky in profile, it's only 13.1 millimeters thick. Let me polish up this case back because frankly, it deserves it. Jumping back to the case back, you can see the six day power reserve with full black polished barrel bridge, as gorgeous as it gets. You can note the micro light mini engraving. It's not Cote de Bethune. It is not the Cote de Genève. This is a sort of micro light pattern that is proprietary to the brand, and you'll note the plinth underneath the whole movement is black polished. Look how much black polishing there is. All of it concave on this case back. It boggles the mind. It delights the senses. It dazzles the eyes. I've never been intimidated by a spread on Watches Live. This is approaching that level. Jumping right into the box, I could see, bum, 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 someone was asking a question, Tim, how many, some, bum, bum, bum. let me see if I can find. This chat box moves so quickly, I have trouble following it in real time. I can see right here, Captain Zed saying, of course, I have a watch that was co-designed by William Shatner. <laughs> and I see Dominic Jr. saying, I see beauty in the movement of these watches, but I don't get mesmerized as I would with the backside of a Carrie Patek 
or Roger Smith, you need to see them up close and you will. The finish is completely different from a lot of those guys. The detailing in these watches is as good as the macro shot. So you see it from like three feet away on my camera, but if you loop these movements, they are as beautifully finished in the classical Canton of Vaux, Valley de Jeu fashion, as you will find from the likes of Philippe Dufour, the best of Jeger Lecoult, David Kando, and yes, Kerry Voudelainen. And I can see right here, Mark asked Tim, how many recommendation letters have you written to Dartmouth undergraduate applications? I get a request every once in a while. I still have some pull there. Why? Is this a request? <laughs> For the right price, I can rent your entrance ex essay. No, we're not doing uh, we're not doing entrance essay fraud here. That's a West Coast thing, apparently. And right here, I can see Amar saying, "Don't know about the rest of you, but I never really appreciated DB until now." You know what? I, I absolutely agree with you. You have to see them to believe them. See them May 3rd through 4th. Join, link in the description, register to see me and all of these watches, plus about four I couldn't fit on the desk at Watch Time LA. And then right here, High and Risey saying, if this were an old Woody Allen movie, Tim would accidentally knock all the watches off the table. Well, the good news is I'm not Woody. I have a dry sense of humor and I'm a little bit less clumsy about my appendages. Jumping right into the box and as something saying laugh out loud, he appreciates it. Let's jump into a watch that is going to be a bit different from anything we've seen so far. This is the DB25 Starry Sky. It takes that essential blued titanium dial aesthetic, but it expands it to the very edge. This is going to be, for a lot of folks, the happy medium between a DB28 kind of blue and something like the conservatism of the Titan Hawk. For me, this is a glorious watch, but here's where it gets a little bit nuanced. They have a full baguette set case band. So, you've got a combination of the Starry Sky and icebergs. This is like the last minutes of the Titanic in watch form, a night to remember. Throw it on the wrist and you could see that the DB25 lugs wear beautifully. This is a 44 millimeter case, so the, the class, DB28, DB27, DB25, it doesn't necessarily denote a size, it's more of a style guide. This is a big watch, you can see it has the 360 degree moon phase up at 12 o'clock, and happily, for the sake of contrast, they went with rose gold hands on this one. Flip it all over and again, Although they do many variations on this movement, no two are identically finished. You could see this entire case back has been specular finished. It's black polished. You could see why it turns black as I move it through the right angle with respect to the lens. That's why they call it poly noir or black polish. As good as it gets, only the sky is the limit with De Batun. And of course, you could see the gold cabochon stars as well as the laser ablation to create the Milky Way right through the center of the dial. And I have a U.S. edition for those folks living on the left side of the Atlantic. This is a 10-piece series that came out at Watches and Wonders, and this might be my sign-off piece because this is a spectacular piece that kind of unites the past and present of my life in the watch industry. So this model was released in Miami, and it's a watch that I only came into contact for the first time with today in Philadelphia. It has a rose gold bezel and a rose gold primary case center, so you can see that's rose gold, and then the rest is grade 5 titanium blued. The dial itself is a combination of blued brass and blued grade 5 titanium, and it has that signature Starfleet motif right at the center. Of course, this is the 2016 version of the bimaterial titanium and white gold balance. Debatun with no fewer than half a dozen individual balance patents, all of them production issued, all of them serialized, and that's at least half a dozen, not maximally. I don't know how many they have total. It's too many to count at this point. Jumping into the box, I want to thank everyone who joined us tonight. This was a very special evening. Uh, I will never forget this, and I will never forget all the folks who commented. Whether you're into the style of this brand or not, it is the next big thing. These are watches you can wear anywhere if you have the panache. And if you go with something like the DB25 Starry Varus, they even have the discretion to wear with a suit, to wear in the office, to wear with black tie. I don't know what to say other, about this brand other than I deeply believe in it. And I would do so much as give an unsponsored endorsement. I love these. I would spend my own money on them. I don't say that very often, but I wish I owned every single watch on this table. I've given up watch collecting for the time being. These watches make me want to get back into the game. Thanks to you. Thanks to my crew. Link in the description. Win the Rolex. Join me at Watch Time LA. Time out, Tim out, and thank you for logging on.